guys, it's Matthew. Uh, some questions have been asked, uh, such as uh, what's been happening with the foliar spray for the liquid seaweed extract, how are the seeds doing for the Super Thrive experiment, and I am going to answer those today. Unfortunately, with the foliar spray, with the liquid seaweed extract, I don't really have anything to compare it to because we didn't do any side-by-side -side comparison, so maybe in the future we can do that. Uh, I can honestly say the plants aren't any worse for it, but I don't think they're really any better for it. And I'm surprised that on the bottle it says, Research has proved that plants will assimilate micronutrients and hormones more easily when sprayed with a foliar feed application than when used in an inorganic form in soil. So it's hard to think that the plant would actually absorb more nutrients through the leaves than through the roots. The leaves are there, they're using photosynthesis to uh, convert the light energy to usable plant energy for the plant to make the sugars and produce the oxygen to help it grow and the nutrients are there to help along with the process. So to spray it on the leaves, I'm not too sure about that. I think you might just be better off putting it in the reservoir. Now if you're set on using this stuff as a foliar spray, there was a user that suggested that you use like a uh, dish soap, something really clean and natural to mix in with the solution and that would help stop uh, the spotting on the leaves. So I think that might be a good tip and uh, if you maybe have problems with a few pests too, I don't think the soap would really hurt anything. But as far as liquid seaweed extract goes, I mean that's the story for that. Maybe uh, a little bit later in the year here we can try a side-by-side -side comparison. But right now that really isn't an option because it's pretty cold out there. Uh, uh, it's minus 32 Celsius, minus 24 Fahrenheit. And if you've seen those videos on YouTube where people are taking that boiling water and throwing it up in the air and watching it evaporate, uh, the same thing's going on out here. I could, it was the first time I actually seen that, so I gave it a shot the other day and it was, it was pretty cool to see. A nice little experiment, but uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with hydroponics, it's just kind of cool. So here we have the Super Thrive experiment and unfortunately there is not a lot to report here. I think the seeds are just starting to crack and they're not really sprouting just yet and I'm using red chili peppers and they have a bit longer uh, ways to go before they, they really do start to germinate there. Uh, however, uh, the cubes were getting a little bit dry, so I mixed up the proper solutions and, and gave them a bit more, uh, the ones that needed it. Um, but I'm worried because some might have been soaked a little bit more, and I'm worried that one cube might absorb something from the other cube. So I'm going to redo this experiment. I'm not scrapping it, but I'm starting up a, another one. So this one, it's a little bit more controlled, a little bit more self-contained. I actually have the official heat mat for this one and some little trays. So the cubes will go in the different trays and that way there's no risk of one cube absorbing something from another cube. Um, I've also changed just a little bit in this one where instead of the one drop, two drop, I'm doing two drop, three drop and no drops of the Super Thrive. And as for seeds for this experiment, I'm going to be using habanero peppers. They have a little bit quicker of a germination rate, so we should see results sooner. Uh, again, I apologize if you're, uh, we're hoping to see some results with the Super Thrive and the other one, but I think this one will give us a little bit better results and uh, we won't have to worry about any contamination from anything else. So I'm more of a fan of this setup for the Super Thrive experiment than the other one, but I'm going to keep both going and I will keep you guys updated with uh, how things are progressing. Another small change that I've done is, uh, if you guys remember, I showed you like a reflective emergency heat blanket and I've actually taken that out and I took some magnets and I stuck it to the side of the fluorescent grow light I have and it's really reflective, it's cheap, it's light, and uh, it just works really well. And I think if you're looking for cheap solutions to Mylar, it's, it's definitely a good buy. And compared to tinfoil, I think it's a lot better 
and a lot more usable for your hydroponic garden. So that's about it for this video. The plants in the flood table are doing, still they're doing really good. They're putting off flowers, fruits, and veggies. Uh, so really happy about that. I want to make a video in a couple days about uh, pollination and hydroponic systems. Uh, so I need to do a little bit more research first and then I'll make a video on my findings. But again, hope this update didn't disappoint you guys too much, but there are good things to look forward to in the future. So I hope you stick around for that. Thanks. Bye.